Hey, y'all, I have some exciting news. Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy is open for enrollment, but only until Thursday, September 26th. Y'all, this is the program that I used to create all of my courses. And oh, by the way, 90,000 other people have as well. Why? Because it works. Amy teaches you step-by-step how to create and launch a profitable online course. And here's the great news. I have got a bonus for you that you do not want to miss. When you sign up with me, you get three months of small group coaching with me for free. That's right, free. I'm going to walk with you step by step, be in your corner, cheer you on, answer your questions, and help you get this course off the ground before the end of the year. Go to getcourseconfident.com to get your spot in Amy's Digital Course Academy and take advantage of three months of free coaching with me. That's GetCourseConfident.com. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Now today, we are talking about one of my favorite topics and a topic that you ask me about all the time. You ask about it all the time, so I talk about it all the time because it's important. Today, we're talking about how to hear from God more. Now, often I will get messages on Instagram or Facebook or through direct message or email and people ask me again and again and again, how do you hear from God? You talk about how God speaks to you or God shows you signs or God gives you visions or God gives you a nudge or a call or a pull. What does that mean, Christy? How do I do that? How do I hear from God like you do? How do you hear from God? I love this question, and what an honor to be asked it. And I'm certainly not an expert, but I will tell you that in my faith walk over the history of my life, I have identified several markers that seem to turn up the voice of God in my life. Of course, it's not formulaic. This is not God is a genie in a bottle and you rub the lamp, get what you want. He's going to speak exactly like you want him to on the day and the time and the way that you want him to. But we are participants in this relationship with the Lord. And so we have a role to play. We have a responsibility in the relationship. Think of any relationship that you're a part of, whether it's your marriage or a friend or a sister or a family member or even a child. In this relationship with this person, you have a role to play. They have a role to play. If you're going to have a relationship, both of you have to participate in order to communicate and connect and build trust and get to know one another, you both have to participate. Well, our relationship with God is so similar to our relationship with a person. God is not just a spirit and a being. He also became a person in the person of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is a person. So we've got to understand that being in relationship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is like being in a relationship with a person. We have a responsibility. We have participation in this. So today, I want to make this super tactical, and I want to teach you seven ways for you to hear from God more. These are seven things that you can do to turn up the voice of God in your life, to participate in the relationship with the Lord where you Open your eyes, open your ears to hear and perceive and receive what he's saying, how he's speaking, how he's moving, because I guarantee you this, he is speaking, he is moving. It's just on us to perceive it. So here are seven ways that you can hear from God more. Number one, get quiet. Get quiet. So often we don't hear from God and we don't know why, but we're rushing around nonstop. We've got constant input into our brain. Even if we're going up the elevator in a tall building, we pull out our phone to look at Instagram. 
if we're at home, we've got kids, we've got dogs, we've got music, we've got noise, we've got TV. There's noise all the time. You've got constant input in your mind, in your ears, in your eyes all the time. If you want to hear from God, you have to first get quiet. That means silence. And if we're honest, y'all, silence is uncomfortable. Some of us don't want to get silent because we don't know how. Some of us don't want to get silent because we're scared that no one will speak. We're not sure what to do. Will we be left alone? And maybe God's not really there. Some of us don't want to get silent simply because we haven't had silence in years and we don't know how to do it. But if you're going to hear from God, you have to get quiet. He will not compete with the noise in your life. He will not yell at you from across the room. He will not interrupt your conversations where you're talking nonstop to friends about this issue. Often, it's in the quiet that he speaks, that he whispers, that he shows himself to you. So much of our inability to hear from God really stems from our inability to get quiet. God is in the quiet. So if you want to hear from him more, you have to be willing to get quiet. Maybe that means that you wake up before your family does and have an extra 15 minutes of quiet time with him. Maybe it means when you get in the car, you leave the radio or the podcast off. Maybe it means you go for a walk and you don't put your AirPods in. I don't know what that looks like for you tactically, But there are plenty of pockets in your day when you are choosing to hear something. And instead, you can turn that off, create silence, create space, create quiet. And when you do that, you are much more likely to hear from God. So step one is to simply get quiet. Step two, pray. In the quiet, in the silence, in your alone time, pray to hear from him. Every morning when I sit down with my coffee and my devotional and my Bible and my planner, I will pray and say, Lord, speak to me today. Lord, show yourself to me today. Show yourself to me through your word. Speak to me through this devotional I'm about to read. Speak to me about my day and my priorities and my plans for the day. God, would you lead me today? Speak to me today. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. It says ask, seek, knock. We have to ask. I promise you this. God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you and he wants to be heard by you. So if you want him to speak to you, ask him. Simply pray and ask him to show himself to you. And I promise you, when you invite him into the quiet and you invite him into that space, I promise you, he will. He may not speak how you want, He may not speak how you expect. He may not speak in the way that you're used to. But I promise you, he wants to speak to you and he wants to be heard by you. So when you pray and ask him to do that, you're asking him to do something he already wants to do. So step two is to pray. Ask God to speak to you. Step three, wait. Oh, this is a hard one, y'all. I'm going to be honest. I'm a very urgent person. I'm very impatient. Everything must happen right now. Why is it taking so long? I don't like to wait. I don't like to wait for anything, but I definitely don't like to wait in silence. You probably don't either, right? Even if you're not as impatient as me, waiting is really hard, especially in those quiet spaces. We don't like the silence. We'd rather have a lot of activity. We'd rather check off some boxes on our to-do list. It's hard to just sit still in the quiet and wait. You know, I had an experience years ago that I'll never forget. This was back in 2008 when I was living on a farm and I was a young life leader at the time. Well, on this particular week, I was going to be giving the young life talk, which this was the message. This was the Bible story of the night to the whole club. So it's a big deal. Well, on the Sunday before club, I blocked off my entire afternoon to work on my talk. I was going to write out the message, get into the word, pray, ask God what he wanted to speak to these students that next night, and I blocked my afternoon to work on it. But in the back of my mind, I thought to myself, I can probably knock this out in 30 minutes. 
you know, I can, I can jot down my notes, get my outline and then just go about my day. I can get some stuff done. I've got errands to run. I've got projects to complete. This will be great. I've got the whole afternoon, but I can probably get this done in 30 minutes and then I can go about my day. Well, I took a blanket out to the yard in front of my farmhouse on the, on the property. I laid the blanket out there in the sunshine. It was a beautiful sunny day. I took my Bible. I took my notebook and I went out there and laid there and prayed. I prayed that God would speak to me about what he wanted me to say. So I waited and waited. I read some scripture. Nothing was coming to me. I jotted down some notes, but they weren't right. I waited some more. Nothing was coming. Nothing was coming. An hour went by. I kept studying. Another hour went by. I kept reading, praying, waiting, journaling. Nothing was there. Well, as I get to the very end of this block of time that I had allotted, which was four hours of my afternoon that were free, as I get to the very end of this time frame, I get the message. At the very end, the message becomes so clear what God wants me to speak on the next night, and I write it down perfectly, all in one take. And as I sat back from my message, I thought, what took so long, Lord? Like, if you're going to give me the whole thing this perfectly all in one take, why did you wait so long to give it to me? It took so long to give me the message. And I felt the Lord answer me in that moment. And he said this, I just loved hanging out with you. Oh, y'all, I feel teary when I even think about that story now. I wanted to check a box. I wanted to write my talk and get about the busyness of my day. And what did God want? He just wanted to hang out with me. He just wanted my presence, my prayers, my undivided attention, my rest. He just wanted me. We cannot possibly fathom the level that God loves us, how he desires us, how he wants to be in relationship with us. And as an outpouring of our relationship with him, like a relationship with the person, by the way, like I said, he wants to spend time with us. He just wants to hang out with us. You know, I had a similar word from the Lord months ago as I found myself coming out of this wilderness season. And it was a hard season, y'all. I've spoken about this very vulnerably, very honestly. For two to three years, I went through a season of trials and testing and difficulty. And I remember praying about eight or 10 months ago, I cannot wait for this season to be over. I knew it wasn't going to last forever, and I just was sensing that it was starting to end, and I could not wait to get out of this wilderness. And I said that to the Lord. I said, I cannot wait for this to be over. And he responded to me so gently, so lovingly. He said, I don't want it to be over because you have sought me during this time in a way that you never have in your life. I don't want it to be over. If we could understand how much God desires us. If you could understand how much he desires you, often he doesn't give you the answer you're looking for simply because he wants you seeking him. He wants you coming to him. He wants you praying. He wants your presence. He wants you lingering on the blanket on a Sunday afternoon with him. He loves you and he loves to be with you. He just wants time with you. We are so impatient to get to the next thing. But if you want to hear from God, be willing to wait. Be willing to wait on him. Be willing to wait for his word, for his guidance, for his sign, for his presence, for his confirmation. He will show himself to you if only you have the patience to wait for it. So, step three is to wait. Step four, listen. I know this sounds obvious, right? You're like, okay, Christy, got it. Listen, but let me give you some context to this. So years ago, I read the book, Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Shire, which I cannot recommend enough If you want to learn more on this subject, it is an absolutely phenomenal book. 
Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Shire. And I'll also put the link here in the show notes as well. She also has a Bible study, which I've also done twice, Discerning the Voice of God. Well, as I was beginning this book, whatever year this was at the time, the very first chapter says to listen. The whole chapter is about how if you want to hear from God, you need to be willing to listen. Seems obvious, right? Sure. But we don't do it. We don't listen. So she encourages you at the end of this chapter to close the book and sit there and just listen. Just wait and listen for what God might want to say to you. Well, let me tell you about a situation that happened the day before to give some context to my mindset before I'm reading this chapter. I've actually told this story in my devotional, Living True, 40 Days to Get Back to You. So the day before, I had a situation with my mom where we got in a fight. I love my mom, but like many mothers and daughters, we fight a lot. We're a lot alike, so we fight a lot. Well, mom had come to see me at the YMCA when I was coaching a soccer game. I was in charge of three kids at the time. Plus, I was pregnant with Mary Grace and I was coaching the team. She came up and was standing outside the restroom. I said, will you stay right here? stay with these kids. I'm going to run to the restroom and I'll come right back. Well, I came right back. Mom was gone. I was enraged. Why was I enraged? I don't know, because I was pregnant. I was hormonal. I was late for the soccer game and now I'd lost these kids. She also was doing what she's done her whole life, which is the exact opposite of what I asked her to do. So, you know, sure, this is a little bit of a wound for me. Okay. Like maybe I had a short fuse on this one. So I began to search the YMCA, look up and down the halls, ask around, can't find her anywhere, call her phone 3,000 times. She doesn't answer, again, as always. It's just a real tough spot, okay? Finally, after 10 minutes of me looking for her and the kids, searching all over the YMCA and her not answering her phone, finally, finally, she picks up. And I said, where are you? And she said, I'm at the soccer fields. I decided to take them on over there, which was across the parking lot and quite a ways away. I said, I'm coming right there. Don't move. So I come up to her and I say, why did you leave? She said, well, I just thought I'd take him on down here. I said, I asked you specifically to stand right here and wait for me and you didn't. She said, oh, I didn't hear you. I said, you have ears. You hear fine. You don't listen. There's a very big difference. Now, that was not my most shining moment as a daughter, I'd like to admit. I was really, really mad and I wish I would have been kinder. So fast forward to the next day, I'm reading this chapter. Priscilla Shire says, listen, I'm like, great, close the book. And I sit there waiting for the Lord to speak to me and I am ready to listen. And do you want to know what he said to me? He said, you have ears, Christy. You hear fine. You don't listen. Has the Lord ever put you in your place like that? He has me a lot. Maybe I just need it. I don't know, y'all. But nothing will make the point like the Lord taking your own words and using them back to you. I have ears and I hear fine. I don't listen. I'm willing to bet the same is true for you, friend. It's true for all of us. We have ears and we hear fine, but we don't listen. But if we want to hear from God, we need to listen. That means getting quiet. It means praying and asking him to speak. It means waiting, and it means listening to what he has to say, whether it's what we want to hear or not. The Lord knows what we need to hear, and he will tell us what we need to hear, not just what we want to hear. So if you want to hear from God, you have to be willing to listen. Step four is to listen. Step five, read his word. Read the Bible. When you read the Bible, you get to know the character of God. When you get to know the character of God, you deepen your understanding of him, your relationship with him, and you can more easily recognize his voice. This also really helps you with discernment because when you've got up to 30,000 thoughts a day, which you do, by the way, and you've got a very real enemy that is trying to plant ideas in your mind, trying to put a wedge between you and the Lord, trying to just steal, kill, destroy, plant lies. He's the father of lies. When you've got him in your mind as well, you need some way to discern and tease out what is from God and what is not. The way that you do that is by reading God's word. The way that you do that is by getting to know the character of God. When you get to know the character and patterns and characteristics of God, 
you can more easily recognize his voice. So when a thought pops in your mind that says, you're so stupid, you are failing as a mom. Everyone's talking about you behind your back. This business idea is never going to work. Who do you think you are speaking in front of that crowd? You can't do this. You go, no, 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 no. I know my father's voice. I know what he says about me. I know he says I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know he says be strong and courageous. I know he says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is not the voice of my father. The way that you can fight back against your own crazy thoughts, against the influence of the world, against the comparison from social media, and against the very real enemy that is at war with you, whether you realize it or not, is by reading his word. When you read his word, you get to know him. And when you get to know him, you know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. You know his voice by getting to know him in his word. So step five is read his word. Step six, obey. Obedience is directly connected to hearing God's voice. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever had a friend in college or in your 20s or in adulthood and she would come to you and she would ask you for advice? Like, what do you think I should do about this situation with this guy? She's dating somebody. He's bad news. She's asking you for advice. You're up till two in the morning giving her advice, telling her what she should do, trying to talk her off the ledge, trying to talk some sense into her. And every single time she would walk out of that room and walk away from that conversation and do the exact opposite. She would do whatever she wanted to. Everything you said was a complete waste of your time and waste of your breath because you knew that she was going to do whatever she wanted to. Well, at some point, when she comes to you for advice, you stop talking, don't you? You stop giving the advice. Or at a minimum, you reduce it. You're like, yeah, well, I would do this, but do whatever you want to. You're not going to waste your breath for four hours giving advice and instructions and wisdom that's going to be completely ignored by a pattern of behavior over months and years of ignoring your advice? Now, I'm not saying God is exactly like you in this situation and he's gonna completely tune you out if you don't obey, but I will tell you, he speaks to people who obey, full stop. If you want God to speak to you, you better freaking obey on what he's already said. Because if you haven't obeyed on what he's already said, why in the world would he continue to tell you what to do? You didn't do the last thing he told you to do. You didn't do the thing he told you to do before that or before that or before that. And you keep asking for him to speak to you. He's already told you what to do and you didn't do it. If you want to hear from God, you need to obey. Now, there's a lot tangled up in this. If you're going to obey, you've got to trust him. You've got to know him. You've got to believe him. You've got to have faith even when you can't see. You've got to be willing to look stupid. I could do podcast after podcast after podcast on obedience. And y'all, I kind of do because I love talking about this. But if you want to hear from God, you have to be willing to obey. When you obey, you turn up the voice of God in your life and he wants to speak to you more. He wants to speak to people who listen, who obey who trust him and believe in him and have faith even when they don't have all the puzzle pieces figured out. If you want God to speak to you, you need to obey. Step six is to obey. Step seven, share it. Share what he has said to you. Now, every single word he speaks to you is not for everyone, okay? So there is some discernment in this. But when God gives you a word or when God performs a miracle in your life or when God creates a desire in your heart or gives you a promise, you have a responsibility to share it because it's almost never just for you. Sometimes it is, but often it's for other people. There are other people who are going to be blessed by that word he gave you, by that promise he gave you, by that prayer he answered for you by that miracle he performed for you. I actually did a podcast about this a long time ago when I was sharing about God giving me this whole vision around a four-car garage and how squirmy I was and uncomfortable I was. And I even told the Lord after he gave me this promise that I was going to have a house with a four-car garage, I told the Lord, I can't tell people that. And he said to me, so let me understand this right. You're not going to tell people about what I am doing for you because you're scared of what they're gonna think of you. 
You're scared of the feedback that you'll get that, oh, well, prosperity gospel must be nice to be you. Well, I guess I'll just pray to win the lottery. Must be nice. So let me understand this. You're not going to tell people what I'm doing for you because you're scared of what they're going to say. And you're going to steal the opportunity from everyone else that would be blessed by it. What if I want to do a four car garage kind of a miracle in someone else's life and they need to build their faith and their faith is going to be built by you telling your story. You're going to steal that from them. You're going to rob that from them. You're not going to tell them what I'm doing for you because you're scared of a few people that are going to judge you. When God does something in your life, you have a responsibility to share it. Is it scary? Yes. Will you get people that don't understand? Yes. But let me tell you something, friend. There's a long list of people that you will never even know about this side of heaven. Maybe some that you do, but many that you won't, that will be blessed by it. God will speak to them through it. He will build their faith in it. God didn't just give you that word for you. He didn't just give you that prophecy for you, that vision for you, that promise for you, that miracle for you. And you get all squirmy and you, you feel like you're bragging and we've got this false humility, especially here in the South. We get all weird and, oh, well, I just this little thing. What are you ashamed of? You didn't do that. You didn't buy that thing. You didn't manufacture that thing. You didn't create that thing. Your God did. They can take it up with him. Brag. Yeah, brag all day about what God did for you because you're bragging on who God is, not what you did. You didn't do it. He did it. My kids are not ashamed of the bicycles I bought them. They didn't buy those bicycles. They're proud of them. It was a good gift from their parents who love them. You have good gifts. You have words. You have promises. You have miracles in your life. And there are people who would be blessed by your story, by your words, by what God has spoken to you. Over the last few years, I have gotten braver and braver to do this on Instagram. I will record a reel on Instagram in real time of a word that God has given me. And so you might get me in makeup, you might get me in workout clothes in the car, or you might get me with my glasses and my greasy hair first thing in the morning. But I have felt compelled so strongly, so frequently to share the words that God has given me. And I'm astounded every time at the comments that just blow up of who needed it. Is it for everyone? No, of course not. But nothing is for everyone. And if that was the standard, we wouldn't share anything. So instead, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to share the words that God has given me and trust that the people that need it will receive it. And those that don't will move on. Share what God has given you. Don't hoard it. Don't be scared of it. Don't be ashamed of it. Share it. If you want God to speak to you more, be a good steward of the things he's already said. When he can trust you with the words he's given you, he will give you more. Trust him and share what he has told you. So step seven is to share it. These are seven ways for you to hear from God more. Number one, get quiet. Number two, pray and ask him to speak. Number three, wait. Number four, listen. Number five, read his word. Number six, obey. And number seven, Share it. When you do these seven things, you are increasing the likelihood that he will speak to you, but more accurately, you're increasing the likelihood that you'll hear it. He's probably been speaking all along. We just have to participate in this relationship so we can receive it and perceive it and hear it. You know, I had a um, an experience a few weeks ago, and it was kind of weird, y'all, but I just want to share it. I was having this thought and this conversation with the Lord, and the conversation was very rapid. I asked a question, he answered. I asked another question, he answered. I asked another question, he answered. And typically, my conversations with God don't go like that. So I was suspicious. I paused the conversation. I said, Lord, how do I know that this is you? How do I know that this is not just my own thoughts answering myself in the way that I want to hear? I was especially suspicious, if you want me to be honest, because the answers I was receiving were answers I actually wanted to hear. And more often than not, what God tells me is not what I want to hear. So I was even more suspicious. As I asked the Lord, how do I know that this is you? I had a vision and it was very close up to my face. Okay. It was the point of a pencil, very close up to my face. But as I backed away from the pencil, I noticed that it was a colored pencil and it was peach. 
It was specifically peach, which is a word that the Lord has used with me lately. So it was very significant between the Lord and I around a peach, but it was a peach pencil. And then I saw that pencil as I backed away from it. And I saw that pencil begin to write on paper. And as the pencil wrote words on the paper, you could read the words that it wrote. Was it very bright? No. Would you prefer a black Sharpie on that white paper so there's a lot of contrast and it's thick lines and you know exactly what it says from far away? Yes, of course you'd prefer that. But if you looked at that paper, you could read the words. You could read exactly what was said on that paper. And he said to me, hearing from me is like this. Would you prefer for it to be more obvious like a black Sharpie on white paper? Sure, but it's not like that. If you were to walk by a piece of paper on your fridge, you probably could walk by a white piece of paper with black Sharpie written on it and you could skim it and get the gist of it and keep walking, but not a peach colored pencil. If you walk by your refrigerator and you had that white piece of paper on the fridge and, and there were words written on the page in a peach colored pencil, you'd have to stop. You'd have to stare. You'd have to wait. You'd have to really focus on it and meditate on it and, and, and maybe even squint your eyes to, to really make out what it said. But you could read it, couldn't you? You could. You could read what it said. It would be undeniable what the words said. They were just as accurate in a peach colored pencil as they would be in black Sharpie. It's just not as obvious. You've got to pause. You've got to slow down. You've got to discern it. Can't breeze by it. Pick it up by skimming. You've got to spend time with it. But if you do, if you're willing to slow down and focus on it and look at it and meditate on it, it's undeniable. It's undeniable what he has said. Hearing from God is like that. It may not be as clear, obvious as you want. It may not be something you can pick up as you just breeze by. But God is speaking. He is speaking to you all the time. And when we slow down and we look at it, it's undeniable what he has said. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me for Get Your Hopes Up. I love hanging out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to him and get your hopes up again. Be sure to share this episode on Instagram and Facebook so other people can get their hopes up as well. And then follow the Christy Wright podcast channel so you never miss a new show. Then I'll see you next Monday for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up.